I think that the market is going to look at the Putin Biden meeting from the lens of a, a couple of things. First is on the cyber attacks and the ransomware attacks. Uh, this has really attacked the reopening trade, uh, things that hit gas, meat, uh, travel. Um, and if there is a better than expected meeting, there might be some hope that we can get some relief there. If it's worse than expected, I think people will be concerned that we are going to see more of this. I think one area of potential agreement is on nuclear nonproliferation. That is obviously mm. a huge positive. Um, but then we're also looking to see how this meeting plays into the whole theme of Biden's concerns of democracies versus autocracies and how Russia and China are being more and more linked uh, by the Biden administration as two areas of significant concern uh, in a more hawkish stance than I think a lot of people had anticipated at the beginning of his term. Let me ask it bluntly, Ed, what leverage, if anything, do we have over Russia whatsoever? Um, the U.S. dollar, uh, the fact that almost all financial transactions in this world go through the SWIFT financial system, uh, that is a significant advantage that the United States has. And it is arguably we are at a point where we have more leverage there than any point in our history. Um, leadership, uh, we just finished up the NATO summit. Um, and if there is one thing that Putin and Russia are always fearful of is a stronger NATO. Um, and so it is a very well choreographed kind of trip where we start with the G7. He's not invited there. He used to be going to NATO, showing mm. a stronger NATO, uh, and then uh, having a meeting with Putin and not giving him a press conference. These are a series of events that shows kind of a uh, pretty forceful position, a strong position by the United States. Trying to marginalize Putin a bit by, by not giving him that platform, but, but Putin does know that he has literally the middle ground between the Western world and China. It's increasingly, Ed, starting to feel like the U.S. and Western Europe, sort of, and China on the other side. Russia is literally and figuratively in the middle. How much will China factor in to these discussions? I think it will be huge. I think, it, you know, it's, it's interesting to go back even 40, 50 years ago where uh, there was a battle between Russia and China, and China decided to pivot towards the West. And part of the reopening of China uh, for more than a generation has been their desire to engage in the West. Uh, it seems as if that rise uh, was fueled by that. But now there is real concerns about human rights abuses in China, uh, autocracy, uh, and kind of the leadership by uh, Xi. And so it does seem that the further we see some decoupling between the United States and China, the more likely there will be greater ties between uh, China and Russia. That is a policy decision that has to be played out. Uh, but ultimately, the United States has very strong allies. Russia and China don't have any true allies that go back as long as the United States does. Yeah, but somehow they keep getting it done. Obviously, the, the world's consumer producer, that is, of course, China. Russia, one of, if not maybe the second or third most powerful oil producer in the world as well. A lot of talk about cyber attacks. Biden is expected to say to Putin, you need to knock that off. But do you think that Putin will be receptive? Something that is costing American corporations and consumers tens of billions of dollars a year, if not more. I don't think he's necessarily going to be receptive. He engages a lot of whataboutisms. Uh, my favorite uh, quote from him this week is, if you're ugly, don't blame the mayor. Uh, a lot of deflection. Um, so I think that you know this is asymmetric warfare from Putin uh, in Russia. They don't have to spend a lot of money. They don't have to be an official state actor to get a real impact in impacting consumer confidence in this country. Uh, so he might say yeah. a couple of things, but it's not going to be something he follows through. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.